So good evening, y'all. Or good afternoon. Or if you're in Congress time, good morning. <laughs> NYC Resistor is a Brooklyn-based uh, hackerspace founded in 2008 and inspired, I'm told, by found the founding members coming to the CCC and looking at all the things going on here and decided this is something that we need in New York. It occupies the same a sweet spot of the Congress, which is the intersection of art and technology. And this talk is a perfect example of that. It's about vector retro gaming, and uh, it's, only, it's one of the four talks that are being presented here by NYC Resistor. Uh, and with that, I'd like to pause here for station identification. <laughs> no, I, um, uh, I'm gonna say, I'd like you to help me give it up for Adil Lin and Tremel Hudson. <laughs> Tremel gets the rock star mic. Well, thank you all for uh, bearing with us during our technological uh, troubles. Um, so, I'm Tremel Hudson uh, from NYC Resistor. Hi, I'm Adele. Adele Lin from NYC Resistor. And uh, we're here to talk about uh, vectors uh, and uh, vector games and the history of vector games. So uh, we're going to quickly run through um, the early stages of um, vector, vector monitors. So um, at the start, vector monitors were mainly used to um, display um, uh, outputs from analog computers. Here you can see the EAI um, 680, um, which is used to um, implement uh, differential equations. And you can see um, the vector scope, like right um, at the top left corner there. So here you have a bunch of op amps um, outputting and implementing the differential equations and the um, knobs there, which are used to control the inputs. And you can see all those are great ingredients for creating a video game. Uh, which is what happened with um, Tennis for Two. So um, at the Brookhaven National Labs, um, we had uh, physicist William Higginbottom for, um, for the demo day decided he wanted to do something a little bit more fun. So instead of um, demonstrating um, and calculating um, projectiles, uh, ballistic projectiles, he was like, well, let's create a video game. And that's how Tennis for Two came about. Um, in 1997, for the 50th anniversary, um, there was a second recreation by another physicist, Peter Takak. And um, the interesting part of this is that this video game was in, um, created entirely out of uh, um, analog parts. So you had um, relays, uh, you had resistors that simulated drag, and the star of the show, we were told at the time, was the um, germanium alloy trans uh, transistors, which, we, um, which allowed for really fast switching um, during gameplay. And I was really lucky in um, earlier this year to be part, uh, to be able to do um, the third, well, the second recreation of Tennis for Two. But this time it was, um, we did it entirely um, digitally. Uh, so the reason for this is this is um, part of the Silicon City exhibition at the New York Historical Society. And as um, an exhibit that needed to be up for five months, um, we weren't able to use analog parts because, as we were told, on the day itself, um, we had engineers at the Brookhaven Avon National Labs having to switch out relays and parts itself. Um, so, um, as you can see, we um, emulated the original um, Dumont uh, CRT screen um, by creating our own cabinets, and um, this was created using um, Unity and Arduinos. <laughs> so, Tennis for Two being the original um, analog video game, Space War was the, um, the first ever digital um, video game. Again, shown, um, produced on the PDP-1, ported to a Vectrex. Um, it was wildly popular and people, lots of people created their own controllers um, and uh, their own versions of that. A slightly different type of vector display um, are the storage tube um, displays. So for example, the Tektronix 4000 series um, you have here, they um, used to create really, really beautiful high-res um, um, high drawings. Um, but these, these are kind of permanent um, drawings. So as you can see, for example, the um, Utah teapot here, which is the standard um, vector um, drawing of 3D rendering uh, reference, this kind of takes um, 30 seconds to, to 
do the full drawing and kind of then you need to like pick it up and shake the thing to kind of reset it. So kind of, you know, like why vectors? Why at a time where video games were um, done on raster, raster displays, why vectors? Well, mainly because it was um, hugely um, expensive. So the Vectrex, um, Vectrexes were able to um, draw some really high res uh, drawings using really low bandwidth and low memory. And to, do, um, to use a raster display that would have the buffering to hold a 1024 by 1024 frame rate of the original asteroids would have cost thousands and thousands of dollars. And also take a look at kind of a bitmap version of Star Wars versus um, one done on a vector display. Look at the, you know, the resolution and the roundness. Um, it's just incredibly beautiful. Um, vector displays are amazing for doing 3D animation. At the time compared, look at, uh, again, the bitmap version versus um, the, the vector version of the TIE Fighter there. You can get, um, you can get amazing um, scaling and rotation and really depth to the image and a really kind of much more immersive uh, feel, I think, to playing the game. So the, there are a couple different ways to generate the vectors. And the, these are analog signals that are steering the beam around the scope. Uh, th there were two main techniques that were used in the Atari systems. The earliest ones were called uh, digital vector generation, and they directly moved the beam around. Uh, so lunar lander, uh, shown here where we've disabled the Z channel, so the, uh, you can actually see the traces, uh, it goes from one point directly to the next. The Tempest uh, later game uh, always returns to the center uh, in between drawing each item. And that's because the analog voltage generator, or excuse me, the analog vector generator, takes the output of the DAC and feeds it into a integrating op-amp. So the DAC is actually controlling the slope of the line rather than the uh, position that the line goes to. And then they had a, um, a uh, transistor that allowed them to short the capacitor to uh, return to the center of the screen. This made for much smoother lines and also reduced the uh, CPU bandwidth required uh, to, uh, to generate the, uh, uh, the segments, because they only had to change the value when they wanted to uh, start drawing a different line. As long as it was continuing at the same slope, uh, they could go off and compute other things. Meanwhile, we have plenty of CPU horsepower today, so we can do all sorts of things to, to improve the efficiency of the displays, uh, like sorting the vectors and doing a topological sort so that we minimize the transit time which is the, the dominant cost in displaying uh, things on these screens. And we can even do this, a lot of this in uh, small microcontrollers. Uh, the, uh, the board that we've uh, built as part of this open source hardware is built on a Teensy 3 and uses a uh, microchip 4922 uh, DAC that gives us uh, 12 bits of analog uh, resolution. So you know, this is basically a do-it-yourself 4K display uh, with literally three components, a Teensy and uh, two DACs. We're also working on a slightly uh, more packaged version, uh, again, as open source hardware and open source uh, software that will be more suitable for driving things that need uh, differential outputs or dual-ended uh, outputs. So now that we have a way to generate the vectors, we need some way to display them. Uh, my suggestion is save your money. Don't go buy one of those fancy storage scopes. They'll cost you $20,000 and that you can't actually do animations on them. You might already have a digital scope with an XY mode and it, it's great for debugging signals, but it quantizes everything down to eight bits and it's not really uh, what we're looking for. So you know, keep that in your toolbox for debugging your digital problems. And you can go to Craigslist or eBay and pick up an old CRT analog scope. People are giving these things away for you know, 20 to 50 euros, and they're actually really great displays for a lot of this stuff. You can also find vector scopes from TV stations that are decommissioning all of their NTSC and PAL equipment. Um, I picked up uh, four of them for $100, uh, $100 plus $50 of shipping. And you know, they are super fast, super sharp. They really uh, make great displays. Um, 
And the, uh, another option is the Vectrex console, which uh, uh, people were really excited about back in the 80s. <laughs> uh, this was a home vector arcade game system. Um, and we, we have one up here uh, on loan from uh, CCC Berlin. And it's uh, really easy to uh, convert it from a uh, to, to basically remove the, the um, 6502 brain that it had and hook up your own DAC. Um, and it doesn't modify, doesn't uh, uh, damage the, the system at all. Um, if you, unfortunately, because this is a very low cost display, uh, it doesn't have as much bandwidth as the, um, uh, the, 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 the uh, arcade uh, cabinets. So if you try to use the timing parameters that they have, you end up with kind of an artistic sort of uh, thing. But with a little bit of tweaks in the timing, you can actually get really nice, sharp vectors, good reproducibility. And uh, it, it's really uh, you know, about the same level of exceptional gameplay as, um, uh, as a multi-megahertz um, oscilloscope. Uh, laser projectors seem like they'd be a natural fit, since they, they are also XY displays. The, the problem is that they are even slower than the Vectrex. And uh, most of the arcade games are just much too complicated uh, to, to play. And you end up with really bad uh, flickering. Um, it might be possible to generate some, some new games that take advantage of, uh, of lasers. But um, until then, we, we kind of shelter our laser project for now. Uh, what folks are looking for when they're emulating these vector systems is this sort of beautiful kind of you know, sharp pixel, uh, pixel-free lines and the, the kind of the bloom of, of the bright vectors. And, and MAME has a way to emulate that, that, but it just kind of fuzzes out things. And it's, it's not really a, as good as, as the real display. But what MAME does a great job of is emulating thousands of games, including uh, every vector game um, that's listed on uh, on Wikipedia, and, the, um, uh, and you can find the ROMs in the usual sort of places. Um, so uh, we've uh, written a patch for MAME that uh, hooks into the uh, into it and is able to, to export those vectors. And it, it's not a very large patch. It basically, uh, we, we grab the vectors when they're being handed off to the uh, OpenGL line drawing and send a copy of them out the serial port to the board that we've designed. Unfortunately, the MAME team felt this was unacceptably hacky, and uh, they closed, uh, they rejected the pull request. So until then, you can clone uh, uh, my MAME tree, and um, I have build instructions on my website. Uh, this also uh, works in the MAME for all distribution, which runs on the Raspberry Pi. So you don't, uh, if you want to build a, a small cabinet, you can put a little Pi in there uh, with one of these uh, uh, digital analog boards to uh, create a, a multi-vector arcade game system. Um, so when you go out and you find those ROMs, wherever you find them, um, you can get the original Space War. You can get Asteroids, which is one of the uh, most popular, uh, highest grossing games of all time. Uh, Tempest and Lunar Lander are really a lot of fun. Uh, Star Wars was an officially uh, licensed uh, uh, franchise and is, is an awesome game. Um, Battlezone is one of the first real 3D-like games. Um, Star Trek even had a licensed franchise, Empire Strikes Back. Unfortunately, there is no Force Awakens uh, vector game, but if somebody wants to write one, that'd be awesome. Um, and really, there's a whole bunch of uh, vector games out there. Most of them are pretty obscure. Um, I had never heard of many of them until I, I started down this project of, uh, of building these. Some of them are okay, some of them are just uh, complete uh, rip-offs of other games, but there's a lot of fun things to, to sort of experiment with. And I guess once you've got your games going, you obviously want to make you know, your own custom controls and your own you know, beautiful cabinets. Um, I'm sure everyone has given this a go, but you, know, you can um, design almost anything and print and, and create anything these days. You can get your controllers from Adafruit, even you know, your own coin receptors all kinds of different buttons. Um, take, for example, Tim Bartlett's Asteroid, um, Asteroid game. He's um, uh, print, got the original designs, um, printed them on, and um, laser cut them, um, and all the CNC patterns, you can get them all on his website. 
Uh, Jürgen Mueller also created his own um, asteroids cabinet. It's kind of half-sized. Um, it's using a Vectrex machine and uh, when, you know, using the original asteroids logic boards. Um, not, again, another kind of great example. Um, so um, now that you have your games, you got your own cabinets, you actually maybe want to make your own um, creations. Um, this is um, Trammell's clone of asteroids, space rocks, um, which you can get from his website as well. Um, you know, when you're done playing, you may just want to know what time it is and how many hours you spent. You can um, make your own scope clock. Um, the Team Z3 has um, through holes which you can put your clock crystals on and, um, you know, get this really beautiful um, display for your home. Uh, this is um, a super cool uh, game that was shown at the uh, Maker Faire in New York earlier this year. Um, it's kind of like one of the first original, the nearest original um, arcade games, um, something that hasn't really been done in like 30 years. Uh, it's got its own like tank controllers, and again, it's like a really great custom cabinet. Um, in order to help you do that, we've also um, got a processing library, which you, you know, everybody uses processing. Um, you can make your own uh, vector art or um, processing games and then port it to the Team C3. And again, make your own cabinets, um, you know, have your own um, game systems at home. Uh, here's just a quick look of what you need in the processing library. Um, you get your vector lines and then you kind of send them um, out. Um, so to take this a step further, um, I'm part of a group called Code Liberation, and um, we teach coding um, for game design um, to women, and we'll be running a um, processing to Vectrex workshop um, at NYC Resistor, um, and then um, we'll be um, also organizing a demo party night at uh, Baby Castles um, later on after that. So if you guys are in the region, um, you know, do come along and join us. But since you're in the region now, um, at 7.30, you can also find us and the Vectrex and Oscilloscope um, at Hall A2. Um, you'll be able to play all of the um, original Atari Vector games. Um, so yeah, do come and say hi. So thanks you all so much for coming to the talk. Um, we've got uh, the slides from the talk and a bunch of background material uh, on uh, the website, as well as information on converting the Vectrex and some uh, different vector scopes. Uh, and also then the schematics and open source hardware is available from um, uh, v.st. And uh, with that, we'd love to open up to any questions. So if you want to ask a question, please uh, step up to one of the microphones and um, make yourself uh, available. In the meantime, um, the people who are leaving, could you leave please quietly? Do we have a question over there? Um, have you thought about using multiple lasers to compensate for the slow uh, speed of the laser? Do you think that would be possible? It would certainly be possible. Um, we have, it's very easy to add additional DACs or DAC channels. Um, I haven't tried it uh, personally, and uh, the mechanical setup would also require some amount of uh, calibration. Uh, the other thing I've seen some folks do is set up sort of uh, exclusion lists so that um, a lot of the small text, like the copyright 1979 Atari, gets excluded from what gets drawn, and that seems to help out a lot as well. Okay, thanks. I think we have a question from the Signals Angel. Yes, the internet is asking, do you see any intentions from manufacturers to invest in vector displays? I don't think anyone is still making CRTs at all, much less, uh, much less vector displays. Um, uh, in fact, even the vector displays are getting fairly rare. Uh, there's a lot of projects where folks are trying to rewind the, uh, the yokes on uh, regular mo um, monitors to see if they can use them as vector displays, and it's been you know, kind of a hit or miss uh, affair. Um, the uh, the VEC9 game that Adele mentioned was built with a uh, w with a uh, Wells Gardner monitor out of an asteroids cabinet that had died, and at this point, yeah, we're pretty much scavenging from what's out there. So, no more microphone questions here. Oh no, there's one right over there. One short question. Uh, you're just using two DACs, so you're just controlling X and Y channel, or are you also controlling the set? 
Uh, we have uh, four DAC channels, and okay. so we have uh, both the uh, an offset voltage and the, the Z. So on the, on the Vectrex, uh, you can see that it, it is doing a bright uh, with that. The demo that's running here on the oscilloscope is uh, that's generating the brightness just by controlling the line drawing speed. Okay, thanks. Um, Signals Angel, was there one, another one, or that was it? That was it? Okay, so left side microphone. Uh, well, not directly a question, but I would just wanted to note that uh, it is possible to use the PC VGA output, uh, output to drive uh, an oscilloscope vector. Um, so you don't need external hardware. You can essentially just wire the color channels to the scope. So three channels, X, Y, Z. That uh, um, gives you eight bits of resolution. Right. That's the, that's the hard limit there. Yeah, th with, um, uh, with these DACs, we get uh, 12 bits. and. It's very, the, at 8 bits, the stair stepping is very, very noticeable. Um, another question from the signals angel. We've got one more from the internet. Uh, what is the display rate like? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, left side microphone. Uh, you mentioned that you are working on this uh, board that. Uh, it makes it easier to use this. Like, is this how far are you uh, mit, mit, like producing this or selling this, or how easy is it to make your own thing like this? Yeah. So uh, we had a workshop. Adele and I had a workshop at NYC Resistor a few months ago, where folks just soldered them together. It, it's pretty much it's the Teensy and, and the two DAX. Uh, there's not. For oscilloscope, vector scope, and the Vectrex, you don't need really anything else. So I don't see any more questions. Um, you said the session is going to be at 7:30 in A2. That's correct. Thank you very much. So could you uh, join me and uh, thank Tramel Hudson and Adil Lin again? <laughs> <laughs>